The Real McCoys, starring Walter Brennan, created by Irving Pincus. Want you to meet the family known as the Real McCoys. That's Grandpappy Amos, the head of the clan. He roars like a lion, but he's gentle as a lamb. And now here's Luke, who beams with joy since he may take Mrs. Luke McCoy. From West Virginia they came to stay in sunny California. Oh, Grandpappy Amos and the girls and the boys of the family known as the Real McCoys. a ticket. You seen all this stuff we're toting and he figures we got money. You leave me here. <laughs> you folks are a long way from West Virginia. Yeah, aren't you? not so far, but what we don't know are rights. We're bona fide property owners, taxpayers, and legal residents, this here state of California. We got a telegram saying as how our Uncle Ben McCoy died and willed us his ranch. Sure, we know our rights. We wasn't breaking no law. We don't want no trouble. We ain't making none. The reason I stopped you, pick this up down the road. Figured you lost it. Oh, we sure are glad to see it. Good fare. Yeah, how'd you know it belong to us? I'm studying up to be a detective. <laughs> fancy maybe but we can fix that again we want to thank you and keep up the good work amen amen, amen. welcome to Rancho McCoy I left the gun in the car but I got my hand in my knife I don't believe it means it's no harm what is it Luke I believe it's a foreigner I just keep calm <laughs> I am Pepino the foreman uncle Ben McCoy he said to me Pepino I leave them the ranch and I leave them you. This is what he said. You think it's a Russian, judging from the language. <laughs> that there's English. He's done something to it, but English is what it was. <laughs> Russian? No, senor. I am a Mexican. It seems friendly like. Where are the McCoys? I'm I'm Luke. And that there's my wife, Kate. We just got married before leaving home. Just married. Que Dios los bendiga en su matrimonio, que sean muy felices y tengan muchos chamacos. I say he's Russian. He says he's Mexican. Well, she has wood again, mine. I'm at Cassie. She's my sister. And, and that there's my little brother. That's, that's Luke. Pardon me for asking, señor. But how does it happen that two brothers both have the same name? Well, you see, in the excitement of having him, Ma and Pa Plum forgot they already had me. <laughs> remember not to ask so many questions. And, and this here, this here's Grandpa Amos. That's the oldest living real McCoy. It's a great pleasure to meet you, Senor Grandpa. Y usted no más mande lo que quiera, porque usted es el patrón. <laughs> I still say he's a Russian. Now, if you want to stand here talking to me, Ken, when I'm going out to look over the property. Come on, I'll help you unload the car. Huh? Oh, I sure hope it's as pretty on the inside as it is on the out. yourself a charley horse? <laughs> Gee, 
you cut your foot? No. Well, then why, Ford, do you want me to carry you into the house? It's fitting. It's fitting? Well, now, how come? On account of we just got married. Well, where at did you hear about this? I've seen it in the picture show. Well, now, honey, babe, you see a passel of things, and picture shows aren't hardly fitting for human beings to do. I've seen a picture show where this fella takes off his clothes and puts on a special suit just to sleep in. I've seen one where this man he took and drank out of a lady's shoe. Now, there. So you just best get that nonsense out of your mind. You grab something out of the car. Now, honey, babe, what we're going to do here... One of us is going to have his own separate bedroom. Separate bedrooms? Why, well, sure. What's the matter, little Luke? Ain't we a family no more? <laughs> oh, that's all right. He can get over it. We'll leave the doors open. <laughs> you just look around. And I'll bring some stuff in from the car. Talk to Grandpa like you said you would? Oh, yeah. Yeah, right away, honey. I see, look. Good soil, mighty good soil, but it's right in the middle of nowhere. Need a neighbor's sight. Oh, you can find somebody. Yeah. Look, Grandpa. Grandpa, could I take up a matter with you? Sure. Grandpa, Kate's my wife. Yeah? So how come you call her ma'am? Well, it appears to me the way she's built is a sight more fitting than sir. I mean, if you just don't feel used to her yet, you don't have to call her no love names like Sugar Babe or Sweetie. But I, I'd take it real friendly if you used to call her Kate. Luke, I wasn't going to ask you this question, but I can't hold it no longer. How come you married this girl instead of Frank Goody's girl, little Barry? I know that was eating at you. Yes, sir. Well, it's bad enough when an old man has to watch his grandson pass up a 16-year-old girl who can lick two men in the morning and plow in the afternoon and then take up with a skinny woman past 20 who sat right there and bowled his brass, said she didn't know how to show a mare, came right out and said it. Boy, I like to cry. <laughs> Well, Grandpa Kate was brought up in a house of curtains. It ain't hardly her fault. Anyway, she's mighty pleasant company. Yeah, well, for pleasant company, you get yourself a hound dog. <laughs> There's some women as workers and some just moon around. And just as sure as I'm a foot high, you done got yourself a mooner. Well, you're gonna like her fine, Grandpa. And she just takes getting used to. Yeah, well, it takes just a little more getting used to than I got to give. Now, don't you go set in your mind, Grandpa. You just wait and see. Meanwhile, it'd make her and me happy if you used to call her Kate. <laughs> well, for Kate, for Kate! Now, I'm sure I can do it. I keep thinking of them muscles on that Elvira Goody. You gotta try, Grandpa. Does it mean a lot to you? 
Yes, sir. All right, I'll try. Did you call, Lou? Grandpa's got something he wants to say to you. Well, go ahead, Grandpa. Well, how do you think you're going to like it here? Kate? I think I'm going to like it fine, Grandpa. Uno. Dos. No more use for them. I hear somebody just move into the house in the hill. Maybe they can pitch horses shoes with you. I already walked up there. There's a woman living there. Oh, it could be much fun. A nice woman with a pretty face on her head and a good looking shape on her body. Why don't you go visit with her? Pepino, you're waving sugar under the nose of a dead horse. <laughs> Keeping your hands here, I thought we was going fishing. Oh, I'm sorry, Grandpa. I have to go register down at the high school. Uh, you mean you ain't going fishing with me? No, Grandpa. I ain't got time. Well, it's mighty peculiar when a 13-year-old woman still thinks about school. Ain't as peculiar as you going down the stream for your drinking water when the rest of us get ours right out of the kitchen sink. Yeah, well, you just keep on drinking that water laying around in them metal pipes, and soon I'll be the only McCoy that ain't got his stomach head away with a rush. Oh, now, Grandpa, you're <laughs> just being contrary. Where's little Luke? I'll take him fishing if he keep his mouth shut. He's taking a bath. Again? <laughs> yes, sir. He sure loves that bathtub. Why, that boy soaks himself from morning to night. Skin's getting so loose on him now, it wouldn't surprise me none if one of these days didn't peel off all in one hung. <laughs> you ain't gonna be satisfied until we got us a skinless boy on our hands. But he won't come out of there for nobody. Come out for me. <laughs> come on, little Luke, we're going fishing. Little Luke McCoy, get yourself out of that tub. We're going fishing, me and you. <laughs> you hear me, little Luke? Yes, sir. I hear you. Well, don't you know if the Lord wanted you to take a bath every day to put more than one sand in a week? <laughs> <laughs> little Luke, I'm your grandpappy who you're bound to respect. Yes, sir. Little Luke, you respect your grandpappy? Yes, sir. Well, are you getting out of that tub? No, sir. <laughs> All right. When you get growed up and they have to carry you around because your bones is too soggy to hold you up, why, just don't come a-running to me. <laughs> Lord, I don't mean to question your judgment, but... You sure I want happier back in West Virginia? Grandma, I see me fixing up your rocker for you. Yeah, ain't it pretty? Yes, sir. I ain't seen nothing that fancy since the coffin they buried old Judge Carver in. <laughs> but I ain't ready to go just yet. <laughs> I never should have left home. I guess he misses fighting with his friend Frank Goody. Fighting? Well, you know, talk fighting. Yeah, it was a caution. Frank Goody would say, Amos, you got the ugliest face I ever did see. <laughs> and then Grandpa would whop him back with a worse insult. And they would cuss each other out until they was blue in the face. But they sure were happy. They sure were. I guess it kind of made them feel young again. Yeah, I guess it did. Ya sé cómo pelearon estos señores. Grandpa! What is it? You got the ugliest face like I never did see. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you ain't never looked in the mirror then, because you got the ugliest, crookedest, most disgusting arrangement that ever got called a face. <laughs> well. Oh, it's my turn again. Well, <laughs> I've got something real nasty to tell you. No, just forget it, son. You ain't got it. <laughs> See, them sheep eating off my ground. That's right. Lady, ma'am, but your sheep's nibbling on my grass. You must be one of the folks that's taken over the McCoy ranch. I'd be obliged to you if you just shoo them over on your land. You must be the grandfather. I hear tell you are blessed with a wife at present. Well, you ain't heard tell straight, ma'am. I am blessed with it because I ain't got no wife. Now you get this sheep out of here before I come. Yeah. Laura McMichael, and if you should ever get lonesome, why don't you drop by and pay me a neighborly visit? You can stop spinning your web, ma'am, because this fly ain't walking into no parlor. Now, when you stop the sheep from stuffing themselves on my grass, ah! they've got a perfect right to be here, Mr. McCoy. You don't see? tell me they got a perfect right. This is my land. But, Mr. McCoy, they've always got... Will you take your sheep and your sheep's eyes and skedaddle? They can eat what they got in their mouth, but don't let them pick no more. <laughs> Crow and a parcel of mutton. Senor Grandpa! I see you chasing the sheep away, and I come running to tell you, she has the right to keep him here. That's what I said. What did you say? For years and years, the ranchers have traded with each other, grazing rice for water rice. Our stream that gives us water comes from the ranch. So she gives us water rice, we give him the right to graze the sheep. Don't tell me. Well, that's what I am to do, tell you. <laughs> now you've made her mind. She will probably stop our water. Why, she wouldn't dare to stop the water. She knows better than the monkey with me. come out as soon as Grandpa goes and apologizes to some people. God, God, it ain't people. It's a woman. And I'm a McCoy. And no McCoy never crawled to a man, let alone crawl to a woman. Now, you listen here, Grandpa. Now, you listen to me. You're all spoiled. A whole bunch of you. It's you. Thirteen-year-old ain't even got a steady fella yet. <laughs> and you, spending all your time soaking up water like a sponge. <laughs> You putting good paint on wood that's already too fancy, and all of you drinking pipe water a mile a minute. You should all go back to Smoky Corners where we belong. Now, listen, Grandpa. We're all happy right here. Grandpa, I'm asking you polite one more time to get that there female to turn on the water. We need water as soon as possible, Grandpa. Soap is beginning to itch me, Grandpa. <laughs> what are you going to do? Go get the water going again and go back to West Virginia. All by myself. Oh, no, senor grandpa. You cannot live without your family. Family? What family? Moonstruck man, a useless woman, an old maid, and a waterlogged kid. <laughs> it is a fine family, senor grandpa. And they love you. Why you should leave them, I do not understand. Young folks just, they just don't know how lonesome it gets being in a world that don't need you no more. Hey, 
Anybody to home, ma'am? No, it's you, is it? You wicked old devil, you. Ma'am, about chasing you and your fine animals off my land this morning, there's two things I got to say. For myself, uh, I ain't a bit sorry I done it, but for my family, I shouldn't have. I'm going to ask you respectful like to turn the water on again. And that's all the apologizing you're going to get out of me, so you better take it. Well, I got nothing to do with the water. My brother did that when I told him about you chasing it. Your brother? You mean to tell me I degraded and, and humiliated myself for nothing? Where's his brother, you and Ed? I'm right here, you noisy old Eastern <laughs> Duke. <Dukes. laughs> you call them noisy, shorty. Shorty? Uh, uh, shorty, is this all of them or is there more coming later? <laughs> Tie you a notch, you, you old uh, tenderfoot, Jay. Well, I'd rather be a tenderfoot than be soft on one end like you. Soft? Me? Oh, that's enough of that talk. I'll show you. I'll show you. <laughs> Ways, don't you? Here's a talk. Oh, you want more, huh? Yeah. Boy, come. Say, you got a muscle or two in there among all them skin and bones. <laughs> How are you with the horseshoes? Oh, good enough to teach you how to play, if you got a mind to learn. If you ain't afraid of being made a four flush out, come down to my place to dinner. I got a granddaughter that cooks like an angel. She must be an angel to put up with an old coyote like you. <laughs> you think you can hover down yourself, or should I come up and back you down? Piggy <laughs> back. You just go to bed and see if you can muster up enough strength to hold a horseshoe, and I'll be there. I yeah, hope you make it. See you later, George. <laughs> Say, uh, after I lick you, let's drive into town. There's a shindig on there tonight. You know, I think you and me'd make wonderful partners. <laughs> well, if you want to meet, you got to take the fat. <laughs> I hadn't been so mean about making him take his boots off on the porch. We was all trying to change him. I had no need to put up those fancy curtains on the windows. Go find him and bring him back, Luke. Tell him I won't take no more baths. Not even on Saturday. Well, ain't no use, little Luke. Grandpa wants to go. We can't hold him. Sure is mighty lonesome without him. Let's just pray he finds happiness. He sure does deserve it. Grandpa! You sure had a scare, Grandpa. Well, you want to know why I come back? I said to myself, Amos, that you're family and they need your guidance. It's a strange place to live in. It's, it's your duty to see him through. Yes, sir, that's what I said. I'm sure <laughs> glad you seen it that way. Grandpa, I'm going to be real good. I only take a bath when you tell me to. Can we get you anything, Grandpa? Oh, uh, yeah, I think I'll have a, a drink of that pipe water. Come in. And, uh, would you hand me my banjo? Sugar, babe? Yes, Grandpa. I 
I married me a gal I thought could cook, but she makes our vittles right out of a book. Oh, I'm so hungry I could die. Oh, you buzz, 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 like the blue tail fly. Jimmy crack on and I don't care. Jimmy crack on and I don't care. Jimmy crack on and I don't care.